My name is Ike Vivian Amarachi. I have been living most of my life as a student. I feel hope is an underestimated word in our modern society. That's why we do not realize there is an unspoken ailment that is becoming a normal way of life. When I hear something as a student, confusion, doubts, I start to have panic attack. And then I start to think of myself low, like, can I do it? Can I not do it? And I cry. I have this anxious feeling. Did I do well? Did I not do well? What if I don't do well? What will my parents say about it? What will my friends say about it? What will people say about it? Like that feeling. Anxiety is part of everyday life. With the changes and the vagaries of life, it cuts across every strata of society. Both the young and the old, they face anxiety. And any, any of these categories can still come down with anxiety disorder. When you talk about anxiety, according to the American Psychological Association, it's emotion driven by worry, by thought, by guilt, by feelings of dejection or rejection. So anxiety is outcome of worry as a result of fear of something. Why a disorder is the chronic establishment of that condition which requires management. Anxiety feeling is not uncommon with us university and college students who are mostly youth and are usually stuck in the annals of multiple worries such as academic work, relationship problem, family issues, peer group influence and above all what the future holds for us. I had failed a couple of courses. Yeah, and when I failed, it was it was such a big thing for me because prior to that, I don't think I have ever failed something so serious like that. I mean, it was never a big failure. But, you know, failing in the university means a carryover. You have to go back and redo the course. So, dealing with that, at the time alone, I had no letting family in on it. Only very few friends knew about it. And I was beating myself up so much. I was using that failure to define my entire being. So literally, I was just thinking, oh my God, Esosa, you have failed this course, you are a failure. I mean, what would everybody have to say? What would the family have to say? You're supposed to be you know, a representative. You're supposed to be good academically. So all of those thoughts accumulated. Then after that, I also failed in 300 level. There was also a situation that happened in school and I wasn't myself for a long time. I was worried. I mean, to some extent, it felt like admission was on the line and I didn't know how to handle that. I think that's the major thing about anxiety. There were a lot of things people were saying, a lot of, you know, um, little, little rumors here and there. And I was internalizing all of those thoughts. So all those things coupled with the feeling of failure made me break down. I experienced serious anxiety which developed into depression in my past relationships and um, I started losing interest in almost everything I had interest in, other activities, other social activities. It was a really difficult period because at times people would see me outside and I'll be all smiling and you know they feel oh this guy is okay this this guy is strong. The moment I couldn't pay my fees <laughs> ah shame. that moment was very depressing actually it was it was the thought of not setting the exam missing the exam not graduating with my set um it's a moment I don't want to revisit again because it was so depressing, it was so bad. I felt I have lost it all. I became confused about what I wanted for my life. Fear of failure, fear of what, what, what is that, why are you even thinking about me? And fear of wanting to make like, even if I'm not happy, I just want other people to be happy around me. Even when I know it's like affecting me so much, I just want them to be happy. And it affected me so much in my academics. The pressure to keep on going, the pressure to, okay, you mustn't show you are weak. You're supposed to turn up strong every time. And it affected me badly in my academics. At that point in my 200 level, I know I broke down. I broke down. I told myself, ah, I don't think I could do this course. I remember calling my dad and telling him that, I don't think pharmacy is for me. I just want to like live 
school of pharmacy at this point not so many have succeeded to make it out victoriously anxiety becomes depression and another case of suicide is recorded or the individual simply gives up on life and becomes a total failure i feel bothered then i start to think how do i get myself out of this situation what do i do to get myself out of this situation also the negative thoughts will be coming in the positive thoughts will also be coming in but it will be more of the negative thought but i just try to focus more on the positive side of it though it's not usually easy focusing on the positive side more because of the anxiety attached to it a sinking feeling it feels like you're you're swimming and just trying to you don't know how to swim but you're trying to swim that's what it feels like it's, it's so sinking you feel alone and you know it's just a struggle it's like you're you're trying to find air you're trying to keep your head above water among students the commonest type of anxiety disorder you have when you talk about anxiety disorder is generalized anxiety disorder which of course is again the commonest type you have in the general population we have what you call post-traumatic stress disorder we have what you call acute stress reaction we have what we call panic disorder. We have obsessive compulsive disorder. We have agoraphobia and other forms of phobia. We have social anxiety disorder. We have specific phobias. You know, so there are different types of anxiety disorders actually. I knew I had failed, but I think above all, I knew I didn't want to remain in that position. I knew that, ah, yes, I'm a mess right now, but I cannot remain here. I cannot sit in this position so I had to learn to talk to family I had to open up to my parents that I was under a lot of pressure that I was struggling I had to let in friends that were close to me um, older colleagues that could you know talk to me and encourage me and you know make me understand that I wasn't necessarily a failure so letting people in um, gave me the view of myself that I wasn't exactly seen at that point in time. Speaking to people helps a lot. That was what helped me. I spoke to people and I was able to internalize all of the good things they had to say. So I think having a community of people that care about you is very necessary and important. I knew I needed help. I think that was my first point of motivation. I knew I was dying silently. I knew I wasn't happy. You know, anxiety is more like a feeling, like it's eating you up gradually. So I felt that if I don't speak up, if I don't say something about it, I'm just going to die like, like internally. So I think at that point when I realized that I couldn't handle it anymore, I had to speak up. I, I won't say I'm no longer anxious about anything because anxiety is a feeling that comes and goes. But it's how we manage it that matters. So most of the times whenever I start to develop that anxious feeling, what I do is to talk to God I become so vulnerable that's one thing I think that's the key thing there about not lying to yourself about being open if somebody is suffering from anxiety in the village where there is no healthcare professional definitely the first portal of contact will be either his or her closest friend or if he confines in the mother or in the father if he manifests in a civilized environment, he's going to meet a healthcare professional. In that healthcare professional, the first person to meet should be a psychologist, a clinical psychologist. Then the clinical psychologist will appraise, will look critically into the condition, and now do psychological counseling, which is what we call psychotherapy. After the psychotherapy and there is no outcome, there is no much improvement. He or she, as a psychologist, will now refer the patient to a psychiatrist. And the psychiatrist with a mental health pharmacist and a mental health nurse will be in the picture to manage the patient. There's need for us to take care of our mental health. It's not just an adversary, right, but it's your right, it's your responsibility. You should take responsibility to make sure you are mentally well, sound. And that when things are not going well, that you do something about it on time because they say that prevention is better than care. Do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Be of good faith and hope, and seek out help. When next you are anxious,